Hello, this is Chris Holman speaking. Welcome to this tutorial. In this uh, video, I'd like to invite you to review with me an already built current reality tree. Um, I'd like to expose a real situation I discovered in a country of uh, Eastern Europe. And uh, I will use the current reality tree to try to share the problems I, uh, I have seen over there. And as an exercise, I would like to invite you to scrutinize, it means review the logic I am exposing. So if you find any flaw in the logic or any improvement or something missing, please use the comments of my YouTube channel uh, to give your thoughts or your remarks or your improvement about this tree. Now let's get started. A current reality tree reads from bottom to top and uh, each entity has been numbered so you can easily follow what I'm reading, where I am, and I will also highlight it in the, on the screen. So starting with entity number one, here we have People want to improve their living standard and as you may know, a current reality tree, you read the entity starting with if. If people want to improve their living standard and, as you can see, the ellipse, which is above entity 1 and entity 2, it's an AND connector, a logical AND. If entity 1, people want to improve their living standard and entity 2, improving living standards implies earning more money than entity 3, people look for ways to earn more money. Now, if people look for ways to earn more money and wages and salaries are the main revenue sources, then, entity 5, people favor better paid jobs. If people favor better paid jobs and current wages and salaries are not satisfactory, and the current employer cannot pay as much as employee expect, then people actively look for better paid jobs. So now I have to go down to the other branch, starting with uh, entity number 11. In this area, labor is cheap. So if labor is cheap and adding labor overcomes problems, which means it's a common way to solve problems by adding more labor, more hands to solve the problems. So if labor is cheap and adding labor overcomes problems, then adding labor is an acceptable problem overcoming solution. If adding labor is an acceptable problem overcoming solution and new problems arise, then new labor must be added. If new labor must be added, then employer need to hire more or new employees. If employers need to hire more or new employees and there is a shortage of manpower in the area, which is real, and people actively look for better paid jobs, then hiring employers must pay a little more than actual employer. So you notice the red arrow going out from entity number 18, the employer need to hire more and new employees, which goes into the entity 11, which says uh, there is a shortage of manpower in the area. So when you need more employees and there is already a shortage of manpower in the area, there is a reinforcing loop uh, in this case, negative reinforcing loop, because you will make the problem even worse. So if we don't have enough manpower in the area and we keep asking for more, of course, we will drain even more the available workforce. So it will increase the problem of shortage of manpower in the area. If people change for better paid jobs and hiring employers pay a little more than actual employers, then manpower turnover increases. From entity 19, we have this uh, yellow uh, marker, uh, which is marked B, and you have the other one, which is just at the entry of entity 27. So uh, you probably understand that these are connecting points. 
So it's just to avoid to uh, overcrowd the graph with arrows uh, crossing each other. So B will connect to B, and I repeat, so we have on entity 19, we have the hiring employers pay a little more than actual employers, and people change for better paid job, then 27, manpower turnover increases. If manpower turnover increases and job execution is related to manpower abilities, then job execution suffers from manpower variability. If job execution suffers from manpower variability, then we go to A, and A takes us all the way down to entity number 13, which is new problems arise. If we have variability with manpower, then it's very likely that uh, new problems arise. So you can see we have a red arrow again, and this is to symbolize that we have here also a negative reinforcing loop. If job execution suffers from manpower viability, it's very likely to have new problem arising. So we have a, a, a loop which goes from entity 29 down to entity 13, and we connect as a consequence, uh, the job execution suffers from manpower variability, then new problem arise, and we will go all the way back to we have to add new labor because adding labor is the common way of solving problem, and so on and so on. And you can see that we are just having a vicious circle going on and on. So back to entity 27, if manpower turnover increases, there is also another effect, which is uh, combined with newcomers that need training. If manpower turnover increases and newcomers need training, then middle management is stuck with continuously training newcomers. And this is uh, really what bothers the middle management in the company I was uh, helping. So it's uh, what we call an uh, undesirable effect. And uh, this would be one of the pain to solve. If manpower turnover increases and replacing personnel takes time, then team will not have full headcount. If teams will not have full headcount and machines require full teams of trained personnel to be manned, then machines cannot be constantly manned. If machines require full teams of trained personnel to be manned and newcomers need training, then machines cannot be constantly manned. If the machines cannot be constantly manned, and the growth plan requires full utilization of the machines, then new labor must be added. And here we jump from the blue sea on top to the blue sea, which is uh, entering entity 14. And here also you can see by the color that this is a negative reinforcing loop because we need more labor in a system which is already uh, suffering from shortage of manpower. So mainly what we have seen describes the problems and the causes uh, which are internal to the company or internal to the system. But I have some additional branches which go beyond the system boundaries or at least beyond the scope of control of the managers of the plant. But nevertheless, it can be interesting uh, to explore them uh, because those branches may have adverse effect in future. So let's explore them. First, let's go back to the bottom of the tree and uh, back to entity 11, which says labor is cheap. And if labor is cheap, and if cheap labor is appealing for settling new companies, then new companies will settle. If new companies will settle and the new companies need manpower, then employers need to hire more or new employees. And uh, here you can see there is another cause to this amplifying effect to the shortage of manpower in the area, because everybody wants to have the profit of a cheap labor 
and so it will attract the settling of new companies. So we have seen as a um, succession of cause and effect that uh, hiring employee pay, they have no other choice, a little more than the actual employers, which is the entity 19. And uh, here we have also consequences. So let's uh, restart from here. If hiring employers pay a little more than actual employers and people change for better paid jobs, then job hopping increases cost of labor. If job hopping increases cost of labor, then labor is no more cheap. If labor is no more cheap and cheap labor is appealing for settling new companies, then new companies will stop to settle. If labor is no more cheap and labor intensive companies settle because of low labor costs, then labor intensive companies will seek to move to cheaper areas. If labor intensive companies will seek to move to cheaper areas and new companies will stop to settle, then the wage inflation bubble explodes. If the wage inflation bubble explodes, then better paid jobs become scarce. So this tutorial, as I said, is not about building the tree. You have seen it's already built. What I propose you is to share your remarks or if you discovered some flaws in the logic to comment on it. So it gives me also um, opportunity to improve maybe for another version. If you found some interest in this video, please give me a thumb up. Thank you and see you next time.